Welcome to Biology Made Easy. Today we are discussing structural adaptations of roots. Welcome. First of all, we want to find out what adaptation, the word adaptation means. And it's here, adjusting behaviors, physiology, or structure to become suited to the environment. So if changes have been going on by the behavior, physiology is at the cell level, inside the cell or structure to become more suited to the environment, that is adaptation. Well, if we home into structural adaptation, it means adjusting a structure to become more suited to the environment. Well, let's look at this. If a structure is like this and has these environments or the environment was like this, it changed to be like this and it became like this, this structure fitted into this environment, into this like this. Now, to change this structure, adjust this structure to become like this, to fit into this environment, takes years, evolution, gradual changes over long period of time. And why the changes go on, this individual here will have genes. And if changes in the environment occurs and there are genes that could let this, some of the individual fit into here, then those individuals that have genes that could fit in here remain. And that we call selection. And we will talk about selection and evolution in detail, a class for evolution in time to come. But this is how simply it is, adjusting the structure to become more suited to the environment. And that is adaptation. So when we talk about what are structural adaptations, what we are asking about is that, how is the structure able to make the organism live successfully in the environment. And in every structure, there is basic functions of the structure. So we ask, what structure are we dealing with? Today is the root. What are the functions of the root? We have primary functions and secondary functions. The primary functions, absorption of water and mineral salts, supporting or attaching the plant to its substratum, soil, or other structures. And then the secondary functions of gaseous exchange and storage of food. Now, the question we have today is, what environment does plant the root find itself? And how is the root adapted in the various environments? So what are the environments plants find themselves? Let's deal with that. Plants find themselves in various environments and plants are named on the environment in which they grow. So we have plants growing in moderate amount of water and they are called mesophytes. Plants growing in dry areas are xerophytes. Plants growing in water bodies, hydrophytes. Plants growing in salty areas like swamps, lagoons, halophytes. Plants growing on another plant for support or on rocks for support, they are epiphytes. And then we have parasitic plants, plants growing on another organism and taking nutrients from them. All these areas, the roots have to be adjusted, that is adapted to be able to live successfully here and perform all the basic functions we have talked about. So, let us look at this table. We have environment and the plant here. We have adaptation to absorb water and mineral salts. That's the primary function. And then another primary function, adaptation for support, to support the plant in its soil or substratum. These are the basic functions and all roots will have to meet these basic functions. And then there are other adaptations to do other functions. So we will look at rooted land plants in areas that don't need 
that are rich with water and in areas that have dryness, that xerophytes. We'll look at how the roots are adapted in epiphytes and clambers. We'll look at how the roots are adapted or adjusted as aquatic plants. Roots are adapted or adjusted to live in um, salty areas. And then how roots are adapted. Now, we want to look at the rooted plants as mesophytes. They are in areas where they, they have enough water and also as xerophytes in dry areas. What are the adaptations? Well, adaptations to absorb water and mineral salts. You, the roots have extensive rooting systems with root hairs. So we have root hairs here. This is a root. And then root hairs, you see the hairs, finger-like, plenty. The adaptation is that the roots are extensive, the root hairs are plenty. They increase the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. Increasing surface area, that's the adaptation. And then land plants also have mycorrhiza. We talked about mycorrhiza in our last lesson. Please check plant morphology too. Mycorrhiza is extensively explained. They also increases the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. And we also talked about tap roots. The xerophytes tend to have deep tap roots that reach the water table down. Well, we also want to look at adaptations to support the plant in the substratum or in the soil. The roots have adaptations to do that. Look at these contractile roots. These are contractile roots. We've talked about them in our last lesson, all these. The contractile roots are able to contract and pull the plant into the soil and keep the stem, this is the stem, underground stem. They are large and keep the underground stems in the soil. Otherwise, these underground stems have tendency to pull out of the soil. So very neat, large contractile roots to pull the stem in the soil and keep the stem in the soil. Well, we have these buttress roots to keep the plants in the soil. We have brace roots. All these we talked about in our last lesson in detail. So please check. Now we also want to look at other adaptations that roots have in land plants. And we talked about root nodules that supply extra ammonia for the plant, we discussed what the root nodules are in our last lesson. This is a root nodule here. These, these swellings, they are root nodules. We explained what they are in our last lesson. The root nodules are also adaptations of the roots. Now let's look at land plants that are epiphytes or climbers. How are their roots adapted to absorb water and mineral salts? These are some of the epiphytes. You see this one growing? They have hanging roots. These roots here are hanging. These are also hanging roots of this. This, this hanging roots here, this is a hanging root. Big one though. Then this is also a hanging root. This one is a hanging root. This one is also a hanging root, all right? These hanging roots are adaptations to absorb rain that falls in the environment or absorb water and mineral salts from the moist air in the area environment in which these plants grow. They grow in forest areas where the weather is humid, moist. And so the hanging roots have velamen. We discuss what velamen are, blotting tissues around the roots that absorb water and mineral salts very easily and what adaptations to support? These hanging roots, the roots are pongy, so they are light in weight and they will not weigh the plant down. They also have climbing roots that these ones, we can see the climbing or clasping roots easily. Here, these are all roots. We discuss them extensively in our last lesson. Well, other adaptations are that the roots are spongy, 
they don't weigh the plants down. They are spongy, they have air spaces, and so they can also absorb, dissolve gases as they absorb water. So these are epiphytes. There are many types of epiphytes growing. Well, let's shift our attention to look at aquatic plants. This is Pistia, aquatic plants. They also have extensive fibrous roots. They have root hairs. These extensive fibrous roots absorb water and mineral salts. These, these extensive fibrous roots absorb mineral salts from the water in which they grow effectively. You see how the roots are plenty, plenty, and they have root hairs as well. Well, this is lemna, very tiny. These ones, they have just one single root. And the one single root of each lemna doesn't have root hairs. But then the absorption of water and mineral salts go on through the whole root effectively. The roots are spongy, how they attach. The roots are spongy, so they do not weigh the plant down. And then also the water body serve as a support to get the plants floating. Then other adaptations, the roots are very spongy, so they absorb dissolved gases in the water. Now we want to quickly turn our attention to roots that find themselves in salty areas like swamps. These ones are red mangroves. They also have hanging roots. These are hanging roots, hanging roots. We talked about the other time. We talked about in our last lesson. So these hanging roots, they also have, are spongy. They can absorb water and mineral salts as rain fall easily. They have roots also deep down in the mud. Now, how about adaptation to support the plant in the substratum? Look at the stilt roots of this red mangrove, very branched to be able to hold on to the mud successfully. And these ones is not only the stilt roots, but will also have hanging roots. Now, we also have the matophores or breathing roots. These are roots, we discussed them extensively in our last lesson, roots that have emerged out of the soil from underground roots and these roots that have emerged out of the ground into the air here are they they have lantern cells the lantern cells are pores these ones have all pores lantern cells on them we can't see them well but you can see they are not smooth and that gives an indication of the lantern cells now here is one that has been enlarged. This, this is a whole lantern cell, lantern cell, lantern cell. We discussed what the lantern cells are in our last lesson. So you can check in our last lesson. Abyssinia, we mentioned how they grow and the roots absorb air from the atmosphere. Air gets into the lantern cells, moves into the roots deep down in the mud because the mud has no gases, all right? So the air that moves into the lantern cells goes oxygen and carbon dioxide, goes through the root system and can go deep into the, the plant. So the root system have air because of the lantern cells. And any air gas that needs to come out will also come out through the lantern cells. Now, let's look at how parasites also do this roots of parasitic plants. Here we have dodder. This is just a piece of dodder. These are the suckers of dodder. We discussed this in our last lesson, morphology of roots part two. So please check if you haven't seen the structure of a whole dodder that it will be there. And this is also another parasitic plant. This is a root of another parasitic plant, mistletoe. We looked at the mistletoe in detail in our lesson. Now, let's get to the dodder. How are the roots 
of these parasitic plants adapted to absorb water and mineral salts. These parasitic plants have modified adventitious roots to absorb water and mineral salts. That's the adaptation. Now, these suckers, this one is a sucker, is attached to the host plant. All here will be suckers. These suckers are adventitious roots, right? They find themselves stuck onto the host and they will absorb water and mineral salts from the host. This part is also a hostorium of mistletoe. It's really adventitious, modified adventitious roots here. This is the parasite. It's attached onto a stem. This is the stem of the host. And this parasite has grown thick here and it will be absorbing mineral salts from the host. This is the diagram we used to show the hostorium. And this is the mistletoe. And it will use this hostorium stuck in there to absorb water and mineral salts. We discussed this in that lesson. Now, the suckers here and the hostorium, they don't only absorb water and mineral salts. That is the adaptation. They also have adaptation of supporting or attaching the plants onto the substratum. And the suckers do that. They fix, they attach closely. Then they, they penetrate, the roots penetrate. So here is an adapted root that attaches onto the host, penetrates onto the host, and absorbs mineral salts and water from the host by the sucker. The hostorium also does the same. They are adapted roots, adventitious roots, that attaches onto the host by this hostorium. Let's look at it here. And this is the parasite, the hostorium. And the hostorium digs into the vascular system of the host and absorbs water and mineral salts. All roots need to be adapted to do that. So here we come to the end of our discussion on adaptations of roots. That means how they are adjusted to fit into various different environments. Thank you for being around. So we meet in our next lesson. Thank you very much and goodbye.